again my beautiful people how is everybody i hope everybody's good i hope everybody's great all right and uh, you know every time i come on i want to be a source of inspiration to you a source of motivation to you i don't life is already challenging for every human being sometimes i wonder those who have it financially like you wonder what could their challenges be i know they will have challenges like maybe you know physical challenges mental challenges even financial troubles you know because i guess they have to know how to make sure they maintain being on top and you know the different things and that psychologically must be very disturbing at times you know especially those who may not get it in the wholesome way let's put it that way it's it's it was got, gotten in the unseeming way you know they can never be comfortable you know and um i don't want to be somebody who adds to that i want to lessen my regrets and part of lessening my regrets is how i treat my fellow brother my fellow sister because we're all brothers and sisters in the grand scheme of things you know we're we're part of the human race whether we want to be black white chinese indian japanese Asian I mean I, I just call in things that comes to mind right now call it you know and um, we're human beings and we only got we have one shot in this physical life here this life on earth why not try and every little time that we can inject joy every time we get to inject peace let us inject joy let us inject peace and be a source of inspiration and source of multi Vision. I want to be a world changer, history maker in the good sense to people, to my life and to those that I encounter, whether directly or indirectly. So intentionally to do good, I have to be deliberate about it. It has to be intentional. It has to be deliberate. I can't just wait on my feelings because feelings can fool us sometimes. I remember I wanted to go to a, f I, I was invited to a function once. Myrna Haig would have been one of the performers. And I said, yeah, I don't mind Myrna Haig, you know, as a jazz musician and singer. And all of a sudden, a feeling of just scam, but I want to come over me. I got the ticket from somebody. A feeling, you know, you're a scam, but I go in and want you want to just stay in the bed and just relax. And I've fought myself and I, you know. And people, they come like, they have to create me up for move, for leave the function. It was amazing. And we had we had the great um, Marjorie Wiley on piano. Oh God, her playing is beautiful. What a gifted lady! And I was just in. I enjoyed myself. I'm a, I'm a music lover. I'm a, I love good music. I people. I love good music. Whether it's gospel, good secular music, and all of that. Once it's good, uplifting. It's about life, you know. And all of these things. I love music. And uh, I have a fight myself to leave the function. <laughs> when it finished, I'm talking about, like I'm wondering, she left me wanting for more because it was good. You know, so you can't sometimes give in to the feelings because life come. By the time you're happy, something comes for box that happiness away from you. Jeez, um, by the time you feel joy, something comes come for lick out the joy. It's like, like saying, eh, you're not going to smile too long. I don't want to see the 10 teeth, they might remain there more too long. Right? And so every moment I get to talk to you guys via this medium, I want to be a source of inspiration and motivation. And I pray that I am, you know, uh, media sometimes, not media, you know, people sometimes can come on pages and, you know, add to the mayhem. You know, they, they criticize and they say very bad things and on people's pages and, you know, I wish they had set up some systems where these things are prohibited as a message sent it just blocks the negative because they would not they won't understand until it happens to them they cannot understand what they're doing they're acting on how they feel and honestly sometimes it borders on selfishness and narcissism which is an extreme extreme case of selfishness self-centeredness I don't care if they feel this way this is how I'm doing it and the only way they can understand is when the tables are turned. And I want to interject and say this as we talk about tables turning. People, be careful of what you do because whatever you do, it's going to come back to you. It's going to come back. It may not be the same things or similar in that way. But things that you see happening in your life. It's not about challenges that, that come to make you strong like Job and all of that. But 
the fact that because of how you treated others when payback time comes you have to pay the piper God says don't be deceived God cannot be mocked whatever man so he will reap and a lecturer was talking recently and said, you know, God can forgive us and will forgive us of our sins, but we will still pay the consequences. A babe, same Bible says, no sin goes unpunished. So me want to listen to punishment in my life and the consequences. Trust me. So we can't take it. The, the, if life comes with challenges, we also got to add con punishment and consequences. As of me, fool, fool. No, me dear. Absolutely not. You know, I, 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 I don't want to add all of those things at all <clears throat> on the regret sheet. Make me listen to the regret. I'm going to rub it out. I wish somebody to, when we don't mark, mark out the regret sheet in terms of, you know, it's off the sheet. <clears throat> and, and, and pile on, on the joy and the peace and the happiness and the wealth and the health sheet. Yeah, man. It's supposed to be overflowing. <clears throat> So remember that no sin goes unpunished. You have to be very careful of what you do. It might not come now, but there's going to come the time God does not, and he will not forget. And you don't want it to come in in an inopportune time. It usually does. A time that when you think it's peace and safety, it's sudden destruction. When you think it is peace and safety. So I said to myself, say, boy, I'm do good and bad happen. I've done bad and bad happen. Well, you know what? Let me, let me try and do far more good. So after a while, when me are raking in the blessings and the favor, it is because of the good that I would have done. How I treated people, how I operated in life, different things, and how I tr pleased God. I want to be that vessel. I, I have made myself that vessel for God to use. If there's even one or two persons that I can inspire and motivate, I would want to do that. As I said, life is troubled. Filled with a lot of mayhem. I don't want to add to that. And I know what it's like to be treated badly by people. And it's not people who you would have done anything. And in, in and sadly, pre predominantly, they have been women. This old age, what they call it, adage or <clears throat> not um this old age, uh, it's not a myth. It is not a myth. I can tell you my personal experience is it's not a myth. It is, has been true. It has rung true. And I've spoken with a few, quite a number of women who have shared the same sentiments that women treat other women. I, I don't know if it is the estrogen gender or how the Y and X chromosome situation is aligned in our bodies. But I can't figure out why women will deliberately and intentionally create mayhem for other women. I can't figure it out. I don't know if I want to. It's terrible. And you have all these women empowerment, feminine, and it, it does nothing. It's like sugarcoating cockroach. It's like sugarcoating a scorpion. And the simple saying that has been, you know, gone into mainstream of sheep in wolf in sheep's clothing. I can't fathom it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. And they tell lies and they spread rumors and they slander. Jeez, um, it is sad. I can't figure it why women can't get along. You know? I can't figure it at all, people. And I, I want to say to them, don't do it. That's why sometimes when they see things happen to them in life, and they can't, they wonder why. They have to think back on what they used to do to people and other women predominantly. And I can tell in my experiences, they have been horrible. They have been so horrible that I become so fearful in in actually trying to make friends with women. Although it's good to have a good female friend as a female. It's very good. It's helpful to your body. It's nutritious. It's sustenance to the soul. But women against women. I pray one day that as time goes on it, it reduces. That's all. I mean, it won't eradicate fully. But I pray it reduces... You know, I pray one day it reduces. But women are bitter against women. You know, they, I don't know. And you don't have to do them anything. You don't have to be offense. As a matter of fact, sometimes the, 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 the more honest and open and clean and decent and morally upright you are, it's the more they, um, it's the worse it gets sometimes. 
you wonder to yourself you're doing good and bad happening to you yeah it's a reality but only the almighty god can change that all right my beautiful people so we are at the last chapter of job wow beautiful it was beautiful doing this although there was a long pause before i got back into job and um we're at job chapter 42 and this is when job answers the lord and i can imagine how pious how his head is held down he feels more almost not i mean humbled yes and <clears throat> maybe almost wanted to be <clears throat> subdued but not subdued to the point where he can't speak but humbled because of how embarrassed he feels when God just really showed him who he was and Job didn't understand he didn't understand what was really going on and maybe in some of our cases you know that's what God is doing with us you know trying to show us who he is and saying the very same things he said to Job to us and this is what Job answered. It says, Then Job answered the Lord, I know, Lord, that you are all powerful. And I know he's saying it with respect and honor. That you can do everything you want. I know, God. I, I know. I know. I'm not, not aware of that. I'm not unaware of that, rather. You ask how I dare question your wisdom when I'm so very ignorant. Yeah. I've, I talked about things I did not understand, God. I, I really did about marvels too great for me to know you told me to listen while you spoke and to try to answer your questions in the past I knew only what others had told me that's true that's so true even with me but now I've seen with my own, with my own eyes so I'm ashamed I'm so ashamed of all I have said God and repent in dust and in ashes Let's scroll down here Wow I can imagine how Job felt he said he's just there's he just never had anything else to say he was just so ashamed because he lost sight of who God was the God that he knew remember God said have you seen my servant Job there's none as faithful as him in all the east or that, that that entire country at the time there was none like him and he lost sight of who God was and that's how we are you know when things are all good and great and wonderful and God said alright we allow a little roughness catch you know because I'm going to take you higher the real us will come out the real challenges will bring out when the challenges them start and it intensifies the real us will come out at some point yeah but it's good because it, it when you read you come out you get to see yourself and then you get to deal with yourself with God's help so it may be good in some sense when you get to see yourself you get to deal with yourself and be even more humble before God and others remember Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years you know it took it's when he was 80 before God started using because God did have a work on him and him still did struggle with with because he was born in a palace he knew wealth and riches and lordship and kingship and those type of things and to come down to you know I mean still in a leadership mode but you know in a different sense never easy at all and it says verse 7 in the last chapter which is chapter 42 after the Lord had finished speaking to Job he said to Eliphaz I am angry with you and you and your two friends because you did not speak the truth about me and many times people are tell you sometimes you hear people say God said this and be careful because they're not relaying God's message and you know why God said I'm angry at you but Jesus I don't even want to hear those words I know sometimes he is I don't think I would want to hear it though Come I mean, I know maybe does just Moon move a muscle. I just sit down there and have sack, sack cloth and ashes and well, I mean, I know. And pray him have mercy upon me. I am angry with you, God says, and your two friends, because you did not speak the truth about me the way my servant Job did. Now look, he said, God, I even answer them. Now take seven bulls and seven rams to Job and offer them as a sacrifice for yourselves. Okay, imagine all them 
gallop like us for God of that. I can imagine how they galloped like horses to go and do it. Job will pray for you. And I will answer his prayer and not disgrace you the way you deserve. You did not speak the truth about me as he did. You see what that? You see it? So they felt so, you see, I told you, you know, that these friends were self-righteous. They were envious and they were jealous of Job. And they, used, and they guised it under so-called godliness and spirituality. When they knew that they did not, it was not right. They knew their motive was not right. I'm convinced of that. And God called them out on it. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. I'm lucky and God you hear what God says. I will make Job pray for you and I will answer Job prayer because I, I, I Job is a righteous man before me. So may I go answer for him prayer. Yeah, so God have, have mercy on them. And mercy God have on them, you know. Me can imagine how they run and them shame, them shame, them shame, them shame, them shame, them shame. But God, God could have further embarrassed them. He said, disgrace as you deserve. So he could have called out all of them sinful ways and them bad minded evil ways. Mm. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar did what the Lord had told them to do, and the Lord answered Job's prayer. So sometimes, some you know, the very same people when I say God's going to do, God is doing this to them, and God is doing that, and that same person, I forgot, pray for you for you, and God answer that person's prayer because God considered that person righteous. And the same person, where you beat down and said this and said that in the negative about that, that same person, be careful of what you do to people, to, to pe men and women of God. Be careful. And these were so called people of God. Then after, <clears throat> then after Job prayed for his, then after Job prayed for his three friends, sorry, the Lord made him prosperous again. Jesus, hallelujah. And gave him twice as much as he had before. All Job's brothers and sisters and former friends came to visit him and feasted with him in his house. They expressed their sympathy and comforted him for all the troubles the Lord had brought on him. Each of them gave him some money and a gold ring. I remember reading a scripture where it says, And when Jacob was, I guess when he was wooing and pursuing Rebekah, Long and short of his, when he basically would have got her, he put a gold chain around her neck and a nose ring in her nose. So I can understand the nose ring thing. <laughs> but that's another topic. I know people going to come with all kind of things. But leave the people that may wear them nose ring. Leave them alone. You know, it's about your character. It's about your heart. These days, I'm not watching any outward look. I've seen it. And the outward don't match the inward. It does not match the inward. The outward look really holy. And when they say the inward, mm -mm, sepulchre, grave. The Lord blessed the last part of Job's life even more than he had blessed the first. Remember, so Job was a wealthy man, you know, and probably the wealthy than Elon Musk or the Rockefellers or whoever. Or Bill, obviously Bill Gates. It said Job owned 14,000 sheep. I remember, I think the last time he owned what? 7,000 or, or 3,000, whatever. But it wasn't, this is double. 6,000 camels. 2,000 head of cattle and 1,000 donkeys, a lot of money that he would have. A whole heap of money that. That's a wealthy man. He was the father of seven sons and three daughters. He called the oldest daughter Jem uh, Jemima, the second Keziah, and the youngest Karen Hapuk or Hapuch. There were no other women in the whole world as beautiful as Job's daughters. My God. God, make sure they look good jesus what a god when he must store you you know you look better than what you were before god i can't wait for that time jesus i look younger and fitter. their father gave them a share of the inheritance along with their brothers what a god what a father to job was job lived a hundred and forty years after this you heard that after they kill and pour the house he lived it's like the man would have Cancer, heart attack, or stroke. Lose every wealth, everything, and him supposed to be at death's door and walk through it. And instead, him walk, and when him got the year, him live longer than people who no, no sickness and disease reach. My God. Job lived 140 years after this, long enough to see his grandchildren and his great grandchildren. And then he died at a very great 
age. What a marvelous God. What an awesome God. What a splendacious, a splendiferous, a fantabulous, a fantastic, an epic, an all amazing, all inspiring, a resplendent, a magnificent, a magnifico, a fantastic, oh God. There are no words to describe him. All of these words are weak in comparison to who God is. What an amazing God. God is, was, and is, and is to come. Just serve him, people. I, I mean, just serve him. Just serve him, please. And for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, I invite you to say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for my life. Thank you for allowing me to see this beautiful, wonderful day which you have made. Help me to rejoice and to be glad in it. I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you and only you, God. I've hurt my brother and I've hurt my sister. Forgive me and transform me. Make me into the man or woman I ought to be in you, Christ Jesus. Welcome me into your kingdom and as a part of the family of God. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I ask these in no other name but the incomparable name of Jesus. Amen. And if you have prayed that prayer, my beautiful people, you are now part of the family of God. I pray God's richest and choicest blessings upon you. I ask that you find a God-fearing, Bible-believing, a Bible-believing, Bible God-fearing, Holy Ghost-filled, water-baptized, Jesus on your mind, the found a new life type church. I'm not talking about getting in a frenzy. If you choose to get in a frenzy, make sure it is coupled with spirituality and how you treat others and how you value God and honor God and obey God. More importantly and most importantly, it's about your lifestyle, your character. Which supersedes reputation. Reputation is just how somebody perceives your character is who you are. All right? So I want you to find that church and listen to me. The Bible is a blueprint for life. You can only live the life, life successfully by reading the word of God, praying to God sincerely, obeying him sincerely, honor him, respecting him sincerely. Do as he asks. Please, I encourage you, I implore you to read your Bible every day. You will grow, grow, grow. And it's as if you don't read your Bible and don't pray. You will shrink, shrink, shrink. All right? So my beautiful people, love you. But more importantly, God loves you above everything and everyone. And ever above everyone and everything. Have a wonderful day. Stay blessed. Stay sweet. Until we meet again. Good, good.